Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digital Watches. Yes, it's repair video time and from the title you know that we are repairing faded LCD displays. This is a very common fault in LCD watches and we are going to show two types of fixes. So without further ado, let's get to the workbench and see what type of watch we are fixing. So here is the watch. It's a Seiko A239, so very valuable watch. And the two options we have, yes, we have two options for this fix, is to use a new polarizing filter that would go on top of the display and I will show you immediately how that fix will look like and it's an instantaneous fix. Or we have the option to change the capacitors and mainly the up converters. Okay, now going back to the fix with the polarizing filter and this can be replicated in a minute. So as you can see the display, there is a contrast between the figures showing the time and the blinking time up here and the alarm sound right there. So in this watch, we have two LCD displays stuck on top of each other and one is not showing correct contrast. But if we use a polarizing filter, rotate it in the proper direction. Let me get the proper direction. You can see the fix is instantaneous there we go so the letters are immediately visible if i pull this away you will see that dramatic difference so the fix would be to remove the module from the watch and stick this on top of the lcd display of course it's not only that you have to be very careful not to have any fibers caught underneath this can be sourced from eBay. Now, going on to the up converter capacitors, and these are just surface mount capacitors uh, that need to be changed in the watch. Why do we need specifically to change the up converter capacitors? Well, if we pull out the trusty good old watch repair manual, it says right here, up converter is a term used to describe the circuit in the uh, liquid crystal watch which boosts the voltage of the energy cell from 1.58 volts to some higher voltage. The LC, the LCD display, will not function properly at 1.5 volts, therefore a higher voltage must be generated within the watch module. So that's the usage for the up converter. The first up converters were required to achieve an output voltage of 15 volts to drive the dynamic scattering type of LCD display, but uh, again, even in regular LCD watches, we do have some capacitors used in that uh, up converter scheme. So, capacitors over time, no matter if they are ceramic or if they are other types, they might lose their capacitance or it might drift. What should we go with first? Well, if I go on and stick a polarizing filter on top of the LCD display, that would be a more of a patch job because if indeed it's a capacitor issue we have a component on the board that is damaged or that isn't according to spec so in my opinion if we can look at that part replace it and the lcd will recover its contrast then that is a better fix we are not adding something to the watch we are changing the part that is damaged so changing out the capacitor means that we have to have a means of measuring the value of the capacitor that is installed in the watch right now but we don't have a parts list in the manual nor we don't know from any other table from seiko what the value of that capacitor is and for this we have a capacitance meter we are going to have to desolder it so we're also going to need the soldering station we'll desolder it measure it and then find an equivalent uh, in this batch of uh, capacitors that i have you can find these on ebay they sell them in a series in batches and you have multiple values here uh, we'll just have to measure it find one here that is the closest value we have and luckily we can easily source the technical guide for the Seiko A239 and if we look on the page with the schematic here we can read up converter condenser condenser is another term for a capacitor so that's the part that we need to change so we'll start off by disassembling the watch
and this one is the one that we are interested in. So next up is under the microscope and remove this one, measure it. We are not going to throw it away in case the fix does not work. We have to put it back together and attempt the other fix. So we have around 100 nanofarads. We'll proceed to select a capacitor compatible with that. And there we go. Okay, so now that we've got the capacitor out of the circuit, it's important to measure it now. We can read 110, and this is constant at around 100. So there is a bit of a drift in between these two. Uh, it's important to measure a capacitor while out of the circuit. While it's in circuit, you may have other components altering their measuring. And uh, again, if it's in circuit and the circuit is powered up, you will have further differences in reading. So it's important to measure the two components in the same state, in this case, out of the circuit. So it's time to add in the new capacitor. And for that, we'll just add some solder to one of the pads, not too much. And then we'll add the capacitor. And that is it, the new capacitor is there. Time to reassemble the watch. All right, and now for the moment of truth. And yeah, we don't have an improvement in contrast. So I suppose that the capacitor wasn't really defective or didn't have a significant drift. So the next approach would be to install uh, one of those polarizing filters. So this is the type of filter that I'm getting. It's polarized film, faded digit, negative display mod with adhesive spare parts. And if we look in the description, it says polarized film for replace faded digit or negative display modifications. This is also used if you want to do a negative display mod. And the good thing about this is that it's already adhesive. If you were to buy a polarizing film like this, with no adhesive, you would have to find a way to glue it on. So here we are a few weeks later with an envelope from France containing those polarized adhesive film strips. And in the auction it said, don't forget to remove the protective films on both sides. And I can see that it's written glue on this side and I suppose that is the side with the glue and the other one is the side where you have to remove 
the protective film strip. So I'm going to do a brief test on the edge and see exactly which one is the glue. Definitely not this one. This one is slightly adhesive than the other one. Okay, so apparently it's the other way around. Uh, the one where it says glue is the protective part and the one where it says glue backwards is where the glue is. So before we disassemble the watch and glue this on the top LCD, we must find out what is the position of the polarized film in regards to the LCD such that we get the best contrast and I'll show you what I mean. If I put it straight up, you can see you can barely make up anything. If I start to rotate it, it starts to get clear. And as I rotate it, you will see that it gets darker. So from what I've seen, if this sits at a 45 degree angle, you get the best contrast. So there are a lot of reflections. So something like that. You can immediately see how it is corrected. We must make sure that this top part is as clean as possible before we put on the film. So, and also we must make sure that we're not in a heavy, dusty environment. And now we are wearing finger gloves while we are cleaning the top part of the LCD with a bit of Windex. First I'm going to remove the top part because that's uh, an easier way to see if you trap bubbles underneath. And what I've noticed is that the glue on this side isn't that strong, so it's just strong enough to adhere to the LCD, but it's weak enough so you can remove it and reset it. And because this is a very fiddly job, I am going to do it under a microscope to make sure that I don't catch any bubbles under the film. And there we go, we have no pockets of air trapped beneath. What we have to do is lay it like this and using a craft knife cut around so we only keep the part that we want uh, with the LCD. This is super tough. I'll probably have to use a pair of scissors maybe. And of course, under a microscope. And there we go. Now we're going to have to do a bit of cleaning with some Windex and then strap it on the watch and see what we've got. Now remember that while you added another layer to the LCD this made it thicker and when you're going to tighten these screws you have to be a little easier on them just because uh, if you tighten them all the way because of the, thick of the thickness of the LCD, it's going to press down with more force and you may end up with a zebra strip uh, not being in contact or just slipping aside. And now for the moment of truth, we are going to insert the battery and see if we fixed that contrast issue. You can actually see how vivid those numbers are and also the map is nice and crisp. So before you assemble this in the watch, I am going to talk you through some of the things that I found difficult about this fix. And on a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate this as a 7 in complexity. 
and here is why. You have to be really clean when handling this. You don't want to get any dust underneath. There is a high chance that you might trap air bubbles underneath the film and that will end up in a very messy looking LCD display. And the most important thing is these guides that you have holding the LCD in its position. If the film that you cut will be larger than the surface area of the LCD, that film will sit on top of these guides and slowly but surely in time it will start to peel off because it's resting on this and the retainer for the LCD is pressing it down from this side. So you have to be real careful with that cut. It needs to be as intimate as possible to the LCD. And I always recommend changing the broken part. In this case, it wasn't the capacitor and the only course of action was to add that film to the LCD. If you have a faded watch, don't immediately jump on buying one of those films and putting it on top of the LCD. First, try to troubleshoot and see if there is something else. A proper fix is identifying the broken part and replacing it, not adding something to the watch. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the watch in the starting phase and afterwards when we did the fix. So it's quite, quite dramatic. And if you have a Seiko G757, yes, those watches are notoriously known for faded LCD. Do not jump immediately on the polarizing film bandwagon because there are capacitors you can change and start off with that. Attaching the film to the LCD, it's much more riskier. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and do hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I upload new LCD watch related videos. And I am curious if you have any other ways of fixing a faded LCD display, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, don't forget to wear your vintage digital watches. Bye.